In this course, we will cover how to identify anti-lock braking systems or ABS, as well as basic history, operation, and service considerations. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to recall an overview and history of anti-lock braking systems, identify ABS controls, and recall ABS operation and service procedures. This module provides an overview of the anti-lock braking system, or ABS. Upon completion, you should be able to identify the functionality of ABS, identify the safety requirements of the ABS, and recall the theory and operation of ABS. Anti-lock braking systems, also known as ABS, help reduce the vehicle's stopping distance while preventing the vehicle from skidding. This allows the driver to have better control of the vehicle. The ABS does this by controlling the amount of hydraulic fluid pressure at the wheels, creating a pumping action to apply and release the brakes quickly. This pumping action is what allows the driver to maintain control. Optimum braking occurs when the vehicle stops in the shortest distance and under the driver's control. However, other factors such as weather, road surface, driver alertness, and traffic can affect the driver's ability to stop a vehicle effectively. The ABS optimizes braking by electronically monitoring wheel speed, brake pedal movement, and brake pressure. It may also monitor other systems and components, such as the steering system, transmission, engine control module, and throttle position. By monitoring these components and systems, the ABS can more effectively bring the vehicle to a controlled stop in the shortest distance. When the ABS is activated, the driver will typically feel a rapid pulsation of the brake pedal as the valves in the hydraulic control unit operate. The driver may also hear the tires chirp and a grinding noise when the ABS pump motor and solenoids energize during braking. ABS began in locomotives in the early 1900s. ABS was later adapted for jet aircraft because it was difficult to maintain control during landing when there was water, ice, or snow on the runway. A computerized monitoring system was developed to control each of the three wheels separately. Since jets and automobiles have similar concerns when braking, it made sense to adapt the ABS principles to automobiles. In the 1930s, a major manufacturer started developing anti-lock brakes for vehicles. But it was a very expensive option, and it was not until the 1970s that ABS systems were used in regular production, starting with heavy trucks and European luxury vehicles. In the mid-1980s, rear ABS became available on some light-duty trucks and SUVs. Currently, ABS is standard on most new vehicles. This is good because a person cannot pump the brake at a rate that is optimal for maintaining control while preventing wheel lockup. Without ABS, the driver should ideally pump the brakes once per second to maintain proper control. ABS uses a computerized system that can essentially pump the brake up to 15 times per second. ABS can also control each of the front brakes and rear brakes separately, something a person cannot do. As a result, ABS can stop a vehicle more effectively than a person. There are many factors that can affect the vehicle's ability to stop. These factors include conditions of the base brake components, sufficient traction, driver skill, driver reaction time, road surface, and environmental conditions such as rain, snow, etc. With the help of ABS, the driver can maintain optimal control over the vehicle regarding directional stability and directional control. Directional stability allows the vehicle to stop in the shortest possible distance without wheel lockup while driving in a straight line. By monitoring the brakes and pumping them so quickly, skidding and wheel lockup are prevented, allowing the driver to maintain control. ABS also allows optimal control by providing directional control. Directional control allows the driver to steer the vehicle through a turn on most types of road surfaces while braking. If the wheels lock up, they lose traction and the vehicle will continue moving in a straight line regardless of the direction the wheels are pointed. If the wheel speed is quickly decreased and skidding and traction loss is prevented, the driver will have the ability to steer the vehicle through the turn. ABS cannot compensate for some factors, including excessive speed, poor driving skills, worn tires, or poorly functioning brakes. Positive wheel slip occurs when the wheels spin during acceleration. This means that the wheel speed is greater than the vehicle speed. Negative wheel slip occurs when the wheels lock up during deceleration. This means that the wheel speed is less than the vehicle speed. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. Over 25 miles per hour to 40 kilometers per hour, only powertrain intervention is provided. Drive wheels may lose traction. Wheel speed sensors identify switching action and send a signal to the ABS module, and the ABS module sends a signal to the ECM and TCM to reduce engine torque. Under 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour, the ABS module also tells the HCU to interact with the appropriate brake to restore traction to the spinning wheel. When the vehicle is moving and the wheel is traveling at the same speed, there is 0% wheel slip. When the wheels lock up and the tires slide across the road surface, there is 100% wheel slip. This means there is insufficient traction between the tire and the road. The optimum wheel slip during braking is 10 to 20%. This allows the vehicle the best possible braking condition because it provides maximum maneuverability and traction. Drag, drag each item to the correct location on the image. 
When finished, select Check Answers. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. Drag each term to the correct description on the right. When finished, select Check Answers. For the question and finish, select check answer. This module provided an overview of the anti lock braking system or ABS. You are now able to identify the functionality of ABS, recall the history of ABS, identify the safety requirements of the ABS, and recall the theory and operation of ABS. This module covers the types of anti lock braking systems. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to identify ABS configurations, recall ABS classifications, and identify the types of manufactured ABS systems. ABS configurations vary from vehicle to vehicle, but there are three primary designs, the one, three, and four channel systems. Channel refers to the individual hydraulic circuits or lines that modulate and supply brake fluid to each wheel. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. In the past, some light trucks and SUVs used a system for only rear brakes. These systems are referred to as Rear Anti-Lock Brake Systems, or RABS for short. They do not provide assistance to the front wheels. The majority of these systems are one channel, meaning there is a centrally located wheel speed sensor that monitors the rear wheels together. This sensor is typically located on the differential case over a toothed wheel on a ring gear. They can also be found in the transmission or transfer case. Although not common, some diagonally split brake systems have a two-channel system in which each of the rear wheels is monitored by a separate sensor. Later, the hydraulic circuit controlled a front wheel and opposite rear wheel to provide some steering control, but this was discontinued due to its limitations. Vehicles that have a front-to-rear split hydraulic system use a four-wheel anti-lock brake system, also known as 4WABS. 4WABS may use a three-channel system with a hydraulic circuit for each of the front wheels and a shared hydraulic circuit to the rear wheels. Wheel speed sensors are used for each of the front wheels and on the rear differential. This system is typically found in light trucks and rear-wheel drive, or RWD, passenger vehicles. Today, the most common and effective system is the four-channel system. In this system, there are four hydraulic circuits, one to each wheel. There are sensors at each of these wheels to monitor wheel speed. This allows each wheel to be monitored for the most effective control. In the past, the four-channel system was typically found only on high-end luxury vehicles because of the expense. Now it is widely used to meet today's market demands. ABS can be classified as integral and non-integral. An integral system combines many components into one assembly. It has an ABS control module combined with a hydraulic control unit, also called an HCU. The HCU assembly includes the master cylinder with reservoir, hydraulic brake booster, brake pressure pump, pressure accumulator, pressure monitoring switches, pressure modulator valves, dampening chamber, and brake fluid level sensor. The system also acts as a brake booster in the hydraulic system. This system is more expensive to repair because many of the parts are combined. However, it is compact and requires less space under the hood. Non-integral ABS, also called remote ABS, appears like an add-on. It uses a hydraulic control unit that is not attached to the master cylinder and booster. More manufacturers are beginning to use the non-integral ABS system because of the significant cost savings for service. It is easier and less expensive to replace the booster or master cylinder because they are separate from the HCU. There are many ABS manufacturers. In fact, there are probably as many different ABS manufacturers as there are vehicle manufacturers. Even so, essentially all anti-lock braking systems function the same way. 
They all monitor wheel speed and regulate the hydraulic circuits from braking. Some of the differences include whether the system is integral or non-integral, where the sensors are mounted, and the sensor types. It is important to note that the ABS manufacturer may vary within the same model type and model year. For example, if you are servicing two of the same models from different model years, two different ABS manufacturers may have been used. It is also possible that within the same model year, a different manufacturer was used, particularly if you have an early build model and a later one from the same year. For that reason, it is always very important to refer to the manufacturer's service information to determine which system you are servicing. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. This module covered the types of anti-lock braking systems. You are now able to identify ABS configurations, recall ABS classifications, and identify the types of manufactured ABS systems. The ABS controls. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to identify the major ABS components, recall ABS inputs, and recall ABS outputs. There are several components associated with anti-lock braking systems. First, we are going to concentrate on the major components, the ABS control module, also called the ABS module, and then the hydraulic control unit and pump assembly. The ABS control module acts as the brain for the anti-lock braking system. The module monitors the brake pedal switch input to prepare for ABS operation, processes the information it receives from the wheel speed sensors, and determines if the wheel speed needs to be adjusted. It then controls the hydraulic control unit, or HCU, to adjust the wheel speed of a wheel that is slowing too fast and may lock up. The HCU does this by operating valves that control the pressure and fluid path in each hydraulic circuit. The ABS module also monitors other system-related concerns and sets and stores diagnostic trouble codes as needed. The hydraulic control unit controls the fluid flow in the hydraulic circuits by operating valves to change the internal passages in the HCU's valve block. This prevents wheel lockup by modulating pressure in the hydraulic circuits up to 15 times per second. The HCU includes an isolation and dump valve for each hydraulic circuit, a low pressure accumulator for each master cylinder circuit, a hydraulic pump to increase pressure if needed, and dampeners to reduce brake pedal feedback. The last major component of the HCU is the pump assembly. This assembly consists of different parts depending on whether the ABS is integral or non-integral. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. The pump assembly on an integral system consists primarily of a high pressure accumulator and a high pressure pump. The high pressure accumulator also acts as a brake booster. The high pressure pump creates pressure that the accumulator uses to assist with braking as needed. When accumulator pressure drops, a pressure switch is activated causing the high pressure pump to run, recharging the accumulator. On this system, the accumulator is larger than on a non-integral system because it takes the place of the vacuum booster and stores pressure to prevent the ABS pump motor from running constantly. The non-integral pump assembly consists primarily of an accumulator, hydraulic pump, and motor. This pump assembly may have either a high-pressure or low-pressure accumulator, and in some cases, it will have both. Refer to the manufacturer's service information for details on the system you are servicing. The HCU on a non-integral system has a hydraulic pump in the HCU's valve block that is operated by a DC motor. This pump returns brake fluid to the hydraulic circuit to reapply the brakes. There are several inputs and outputs for the ABS module. First, we will look at the inputs. which are sometimes abbreviated as WSS. A wheel speed sensor is typically mounted to the steering knuckle or hub assembly. For the sensor to generate a signal, a tone ring must be mounted to the axle shaft or the portion of the hub that rotates with the wheel. The tone ring is a ring with square teeth that interrupts the magnetic field of the sensor, creating a signal. The signal is sent to the ABS module to indicate wheel speed. The signal can be either digital or analog. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. The analog sensor, also called a passive sensor, generates an AC sine wave signal that is sent to the module as the tooth passes the sensor tip. Because the signal strength varies with vehicle speed, incorrect air gap, and sensor contamination, this sensor type is susceptible to ABS false activation at low speeds. Incorrect air gap occurs when the space between the sensor tip and tone ring does not meet specifications. Sensor contamination occurs when debris collects on the sensor. Both result in a weaker signal. False activation occurs when the ABS is activated when it wasn't required, sometimes caused by weak signals. Additionally, the wires must be twisted to prevent radio frequency interference. This sensor can be tested with an oscilloscope or a DVOM reading ohms or hertz. Digital sensors, also referred to as active sensors, are becoming more common because they are more accurate and pick up less electrical interference. The signal strength is the same at any speed, and there is no need to twist the wires. The circuit is tested using a DVOM to check the voltage to and from the module. A voltage signal is sent to the sensor from the module. Then, the WSS sends a minimal voltage back. 
This returns signal voltage switches from high to low as it goes over the high and low teeth on the tone ring. This signal displays in a square wave, making it digital. The brake pedal switch performs several functions. It is an input to the ABS module to start monitoring wheel speed, and it is an input to the powertrain control module to disengage the torque converter clutch in the transmission and deactivate the cruise control. It also activates the brake lamps. In addition to the brake pedal switch, a brake pedal position sensor may also be used. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. When the brake pedal is applied, the brake pedal switch closes and a voltage is supplied to the ABS module, the powertrain control module, and the rear brake lights. The voltage signal is provided to the powertrain control module to deactivate the cruise control when necessary and to turn off the torque converter clutch in vehicles with automatic transmissions. When the brake pedal is released, the switch opens again and the voltage is removed. Some brake pedals also have a brake pedal position sensor, which may also be called a stroke sensor. This sensor monitors the brake pedal travel. Normally, the pedal only travels 10 to 20% during normal braking. However, as the hydraulic pressure decreases during ABS activity, the pedal will travel further. When the pedal travel reaches 40%, the switch opens, causing the hydraulic pump to turn on. The pump pushes the pedal back up. Once the pedal is less than 40% depressed, the switch closes and the pump shuts off. The pressure sensor controls the hydraulic pump operation and illuminates the low pressure warning light on the dash of vehicles equipped with this light. This sensor is typically found on vehicles with a hydraulically assisted brake system. There are two types of brake pressure sensors, a pressure switch and one that uses a pressure transducer. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. This brake pressure switch is activated when hydraulic pressure reaches a specified level. When the accumulator pressure drops below approximately 2,000 PSI, or about 13,789.51 kPa, the pressure sensor turns on the pump motor relay to activate the pump. When the accumulator pressure increases to approximately 2,600 PSI, or about 17,926.37 kPa, this sensor signals the pump to stop. Additionally, if the accumulator pressure drops below approximately 1,500 PSI, or about 10,342.14 kPa, the sensor activates the brake warning light on the dash. A pressure transducer functions in the same manner as a simple pressure sensor. The difference is that instead of sending a simple on or off signal, the transducer determines the amount of pressure being applied and sends it to the module. You will need to use a scan tool to retrieve this information during diagnosis. The brake fluid level sensor is also known as a float sensor. This sensor indicates when the brake fluid has dropped below a specified level in the master cylinder reservoir. When this occurs, the ABS is disabled and the red brake warning lamp is turned on. The ABS is disabled in order to maintain proper pressure and fluid levels for the base brake system. Depending on the vehicle, the amber ABS light may also be illuminated when the ABS is disabled. The red brake warning lamp illuminates when the brake fluid level sensor indicates that the brake fluid level has dropped below a specific level. This light may also illuminate when the parking brake is on or if there is an imbalance in the hydraulic pressure within the base brake system. The red brake warning lamp may also illuminate if the accumulator pressure is below specifications in an integral ABS system. Whenever this light is illuminated, you should always check the base brake system first. Resolving a concern in the base brake system may correct a perceived concern with the ABS. There are many systems within a vehicle that collect and share data. Each of these systems have a control module. Many of these systems need to share information with other systems. Instead of having wires run from a sensor to every control module that needs that information, the information is sent to the control module designated for that system. Then, all of the control modules in the vehicle are networked together. By sending data through the network, the vehicle requires less wiring and fewer sensors. This reduces the weight of the vehicle and production cost. This information sharing also makes it easier to diagnose concerns. We will look at two sensors that have information that is shared with the ABS. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select next to continue. When the ignition is turned on, it activates a power relay that in turn sends voltage to a gateway module. A gateway module is the controlling module where all data is sent and redistributed to the other appropriate modules. The gateway module could be any existing module, such as the module in the instrument cluster. The gateway module sends a signal over the network to indicate that the ignition is on or that the battery is sending voltage to the gateway module. In both cases, the data is sent to the ABS module. Once the ABS module receives this information, it powers up and begins its self-check. When the ignition or battery signals change, indicating that the ignition is off or the battery is not sending voltage, the ABS module shuts down. The vehicle speed sensor, or VSS, monitors the speed of the vehicle. Vehicle speed is used by multiple systems, and every vehicle must have a sensor for vehicle speed information. This sensor can be used in place of a rear wheel sensor on a three-channel system, and then network to the ABS. On a four-channel system, the ABS wheel speed sensors collect vehicle speed information, eliminating the need for additional vehicle speed sensors. In this case, the vehicle speed information is then networked from the ABS module to other systems that need vehicle speed sensor information. Now that you have seen the primary inputs, we will look at the outputs. Once the module receives data from various sensors and other systems, it needs to process the information and send commands to the appropriate components. First, we will look at the solenoid valves. The solenoid valves control the flow of brake fluid through the hydraulic lines. These valves are isolation valves and dump valves. Both are located in the HCU. Each hydraulic circuit must contain one of each type of valve. Because the pump motor requires considerably more current than most other circuits in the ABS, the system uses a relay to control the current. If the relay is located in the module, it cannot be serviced separately from the module. The ABS module turns the pump motor on when it receives the appropriate inputs. 
When the module receives a signal from the wheel speed sensors that a wheel is locking, the module turns on the pump to build pressure for use during the various valve functions. As we discussed before, the module stores fault codes as needed. This information can be retrieved with a scan tool. The scan tool can be hooked up to the module or a data link connector during the diagnosis of a concern. The amber warning lamp tells the driver several things. First, it illuminates when the driver turns on the ignition to indicate that the ABS is performing the self-test and to prove that the lamp is functioning. This amber light can also be turned on by the module to indicate that there is a concern with the ABS. When the light is on while driving, it means that the ABS is not operational. Additionally, on some vehicles, the light may flash a diagnostic code. You will need to refer to service information to decipher it. The red brake warning lamp may come on to indicate a problem with the base brake system. A good example of this is a low fluid level or unbalanced hydraulic system pressure. Another reason for the red brake warning lamp to come on would be a fault in a rear ABS system, which in some cases did not have an amber ABS lamp to illuminate. The red brake warning light may also be on when there is low accumulator pressure on an integral system. But the most common reason for the red brake warning lamp to be on is an engaged parking brake. Reggie's turn to the correct description. Reggie's turn to the correct description on the right. When finished, select Check Answers. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. This module covered the primary ABS controls. You should now be able to identify the major ABS components, recall ABS inputs, and recall ABS outputs. This module, this module covers the ABS operation. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to identify the operation of the anti-lock braking system. Before we look at how ABS operates, we need to look at what happens with the ABS during normal braking. In normal braking mode, the fluid flows from the master cylinder through the proportioning valve and into the HCU. Once it is in the HCU, it travels through the internal passages and through the open isolation valve, also called the inlet valve. The fluid continues around the dump valve, also called the outlet valve, to the hydraulic line and to the wheels. During this mode, the isolation valve is open and the dump valve is closed. These standard positions for the isolation and dump valves mean that the conventional braking is still possible, even if the ABS is not working. There are three other ABS modes. The first mode is the isolation mode. This mode is also known as retaining or hold mode. In this mode, if the applied pressure is high and the module detects that any of the wheels are slowing too rapidly, the isolation valve or valves are closed. This prevents any more fluid pressure from entering the affected circuits. As a result, the driver cannot directly apply any more hydraulic pressure to the wheels that are isolated. If the wheel remains locked, the ABS goes into the dump mode. This may also be referred to as the pressure reduction or release mode. When the pressure has been isolated, the module needs to get the wheel moving again. The module will signal the HCU to open the dump valve, allowing the fluid to go into the low pressure accumulator. This lowers the brake pressure in that circuit. The ABS is still in isolation mode during the dump mode. 
a pump motor is turned on to clear out the brake fluid in the low pressure accumulator. The pressure is released allowing the wheels to rotate at the correct speed. The hydraulic pressure will need to be applied to continue with the braking operation. So the ABS now enters the reapply mode. This mode may also be referred to as the pressure build up, or build up, or increase mode. The wheel needs to slow. To do this, the HCU needs to increase the brake pressure to that wheel. This is accomplished by opening the isolation valve and momentarily allowing the pump pressure to re-enter the brake circuit. This process repeats to slow the wheel at a controlled rate. There are dampener valves in the HCU that are meant to absorb some of the feedback that is created in the hydraulic circuits connected to the master cylinder. This reduces the amount of pulsation that is felt in the brake pedal by the driver. Finally, when the brakes are released, the pump runs momentarily to clear the fluid from the accumulators. As long as the ABS module sees that the wheel is slipping, it will continue to cycle through the different modes. These modes typically only last for a fraction of a second each, much faster than a person can pump the brakes. Once the controller sees that the wheels have achieved optimum slip, the ABS tells the HCU to open the isolation valve and close the dump valve to allow the driver to have full control again. Drag each statement to its correct category. When finished, select Check Answers. This module covered the ABS operation. You should now be able to identify the operation of the anti-lock braking system. This module covers the foundational techniques for servicing ABS. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe how to service anti-lock braking systems. There are several symptoms that could indicate a problem with the ABS. Some of these include the ABS indicator lamp continuously on, the ABS is inoperative, and the brake pedal pulses randomly. There may also be symptoms of an internal fluid leak or an improper brake pad replacement. Whenever you are diagnosing an ABS concern, be sure to check the base brake system first. Many times fixing a problem in the base brakes will correct the concern in the ABS. Begin with the pre-diagnostic inspection. Start by turning the engine on. When you do this, the red brake warning light will cycle on and off. The amber ABS light will also go on and stay on for approximately 3 to 6 seconds. During this time, the ABS is performing its self-check. If the light does not go off, there is an ABS concern. Proceed with the ABS inspections and tests according to the manufacturer's service information. Now we are going to perform a test drive. Select each tab to learn more about the test drive. Start by turning on the ignition. Both the red and amber lights should cycle on and then back off. If the red brake warning light stays on, there may be a concern with the base brakes. You will need to inspect the base brake system before going any further. Apply the brake while the vehicle is still stationary and note how the brake pedal feels. Then accelerate to approximately 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour and bring the vehicle to a stop with normal braking. Note any abnormalities in pedal feel and vehicle handling. Performing these checks will give some sense of how the brake system is operating and whether the vehicle is safe to road test. Next, you should accelerate to approximately 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. Apply the brakes with enough pressure to engage the ABS. You should feel the pedal pulsate and both lights should remain off. If one comes on, note which light and the condition that caused it to illuminate. Finally, bring the vehicle to a stop and put it in neutral or park. Neither light should be illuminated. If the amber light is flashing, the ABS module has detected a fault but is still engaging. If the amber light is on solidly, the ABS module has detected a fault and will not be active until it has been serviced. The base brakes will continue to operate correctly. If the red brake warning light comes on, the brake fluid may be low or the parking brake may be on. This will also disable the ABS. One of the first steps should be a visual inspection. Select each button to learn more about what to inspect. Make sure the master cylinder reservoir has the proper level of brake fluid. If it is low, check the base brake system for brake fluid leaks. Also check for brake pad wear as a cause of low fluid level. Be sure to check the HCU for any signs of leaks or damage. Check all of the brake components at the wheel. Make sure they function properly when applied. Ensure that there is no brake drag. Then inspect the wheel bearings for wear and damage. Inspect all wires for damage, fraying, and corrosion, and make sure all wiring is properly connected. Also ensure the fuses are good. One of the most common reasons for damage to the wheel speed sensors and wiring is road debris. This will result in the ABS indicator remaining on. Inspect the CV joint for damage and proper alignment. Also check the tone ring condition and air gap on the CV shaft mounted tone rings. 
Make sure the tires are the correct size and have legal tread depth. Also ensure they are properly inflated. Measure the tire circumference with a tape measure. The size printed on the sidewall may be the same on all the tires, but the tire diameter could vary slightly from one tire to the next based on manufacturer and tire wear. A difference in tire diameter can cause unwanted ABS activation, especially at low speeds. A difference in tire diameter can cause the wheels to turn at a different speed. Therefore, ABS can be triggered for false activation because it thinks that a wheel is locking up. Inspect the wheel speed sensors, tone ring, and wiring for damage. Ensure the air gap between the tone ring and the sensor is within the manufacturer's specifications. It should be noted that not all air gaps are adjustable. Always check with the manufacturer's service information for the appropriate procedure. Check the parking brake to make sure it is completely released and adjusted properly. If the parking brake is even partially on, an input is sent to the ABS indicating there may be a concern in the base brakes, causing the ABS to be disabled. Diagnostic codes can sometimes be manually retrieved from a flashing red or amber light. In other cases, a scan tool may be needed. Scan tools vary among manufacturers, and as a result, you need to be familiar with the scan tool you are using. It should be noted that some tools cannot be used during a functional test because doing so may result in a loss of braking ability. After retrieving the codes from the system, you will need to correct all of the malfunctions that were detected and rescan the system. Refer to the manufacturer's service information for details. The last test we are going to cover is an HCU internal leak or bypass test. This test should be performed when the brake pedal sinks to the floor. If this test is not performed properly, it gives the same symptom as a bypassing master cylinder, which could lead to unnecessary repeated master cylinder replacements. If the brake pedal travels to the floor, there may be an internal leak into the low-pressure accumulator. There are several leak tests available. Refer to the manufacturer's service information for the vehicle you are servicing. We will do the internal leak test on a typical system. Note that a malfunctioning HCU will need to be replaced. Select each tab to learn how to perform this test. First, remove the rubber caps from the low-pressure accumulators on the HCU. Next, insert a clean paper clip or similar item into each hole of the accumulator. Make sure they bottom out against the pistons inside. Have another technician step on the brake pedal. If either paper clip moves, fluid is bypassing the dump valve and moving the accumulator piston. This concern is not serviceable and will require an HCU replacement. However, if the paper clips stay in place, further diagnosis is needed. Refer to the manufacturer's service information for further action. Choose the correct answer for the question. When finished, select Check Answer. This module covers the foundational techniques for servicing ABS. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe how to service anti-lock braking systems. You have completed the ABS systems course. You should now be able to identify an overview and history of anti-lock braking systems, types of anti-lock braking systems, and ABS controls. You should also be able to identify ABS operation and service.